John, do you have any regrets about your career at all? If you look back, is there anything you would have done differently? Started ten years earlier, possibly. <laughs> I mean, no, not really. I, mean, I, I think people always talk about the, the LA deal and why I didn't take that contract to go to LA. But you know, the, it's really strange to me that people talk about how players are mercenaries and they step away to the next place. But the moment you make a decision that appears principled, they call you an idiot. Um, <laughs> you can't have it both ways. I, I. I, the year before I went to Orlando, there wasn't a team that would give me a chance because I can't jump over a telephone book and I talk like this. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, Orlando came along and offered me an opportunity. And I took advantage of that, played very well. And the next year, 17 teams suddenly revised their analysis of me. So, I, I, you know, I, I felt it was principled to stick with the team that gave my opportunity. And then you guys call me idiots. <laughs> John, it's, it's, it's really been... right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I always say there's not many people in the world who can say that their their word is worth twenty million dollars. John, it's been it's been six years now since you came out. I think mm -hmm. has it surprised you that no other professional athletes in American sports have done so since then? I don't see why you would. There's no real compelling reason to. I mean, I've spoken to David about this, and, and for him it's an issue of he wants all the players to play at the very best. But it's, it's still incredibly difficult. America is a country where there are still, the, I think, 30 states where you can be fired for being gay. Uh, so it's, it's still a very difficult uh, thing to do. And, and it's also, there's a lot of players for whom there is nothing else. I'm a psychologist now. I have a job. And a, I like. But a lot of players don't have anything else but being a basketball player and being remembered for that. And then all of a sudden if you come out, you're not a basketball player, you're that gay basketball player. Which sucks. <laughs> Rate racism's been a big problem with sport here lately. Do you think the equivalent problem over there in American sports is homophobia? Uh, I don't think that we in Europe can claim to have defeated either one of those issues. And certainly in America, the idea of being post-racial is popular because there's a black president, but I think if you analyze things clearly, Britain and America both have a lot of work to do. You know, we, we have a hundred year old sporting institutions that think because they just hired their first woman that they are um, advanced. There's a lot of work to do. Uh, especially talking about the, the European market, looking at the NBA, I mean, since 92, we became fans with the dream team and stuff, but you see that we're still a developing region when it comes to, to basketball. I mean, from Germany, it's the same thing with Great Britain. You as a retired player, do you think that you have some, some influence in um, starting a movement into bringing youth more into basketball and, and starting to you know, make the sport more popular over here in Europe? I try and do my part, mostly in Manchester. Uh, I have almost zero influence in basketball in this country. Um, I'm just the guy who people want to shut up. Uh, but I think basketball needs complete revision. I mean, you're talking about Germany, but it's orders of magnitude better than Britain. I was talking to uh, Jan yesterday, talking about France, and he said there's a crisis in basketball in Britain, and I said, I would pay money to have the crisis you've got in France and Britain right now. You know, I asked him how much a player gets paid in France, and he said 7,000. I thought, well, that's about the same as England. But he, he meant 7,000 a month. 7,000 a year here. So I'll take your crisis. I'll take your terrible basketball in Germany, and I'll take your crisis in France. Think twice. Yeah, take it. Can I ask you about uh, which players are the Bill and Mir of NBA today and the drum stars of Fantastic NBA. question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, well, it depends on which side, which, how you look at it. Um, the perimeter shooter and who I was, or the, you. Or, the, or, or the physical player that I was. <laughs> Uh, there aren't many physical players in the league right now um, that go out there and, and, and intimidate people. It's not allowed anymore. Uh, some people try it and they get themselves in trouble. So, but the perimeter game for the big man has changed so dramatically. Um, there are no more, in, very few inside post players right now. All the six foot, seven, six, seven, seven foot players are all perimeter shooters. Um, I like to think I had a part of that back when, but you have to have good guards to get your ball. 
I played with Isaiah Thomas, he could. Uh, so I guess the closest one would be Kevin Love in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. I was up there for two years with him. Um, not only can he rebound like I did, but he also can shoot the perimeter shot and score. Um, but he's probably a little better athlete than I ever was. And you, you? Uh, I have to go with J.R. Smith. Uh, he's similar, uh, a lot bigger than I am. Uh, he was 6'7", I don't know, 6'2". But he had that same mentality. You know, he shoot all the time? Shoot all the time. <laughs> 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 you know, as a, as a, I used to call myself a hired gun. That's what we do, you know. And when you're a two guard, you can't have any conscience. So if you miss eight or nine in a row, you figure that that next one's going to fall and it's going to get you going. And that's his mentality. You know, he can miss eight or nine shots, and he's just going to keep shooting and keep shooting. You know, he had some big games uh, down the stretch for us where he wasn't playing too well and just kept shooting, shooting, had some big game winners, you know, after not, not playing that well. And so uh, he's one guy that I, I say kind of reminded me of myself. How about you, Joe? You know I'm not going to say anybody's name because <laughs> instantly you will not think I'm talking about basketball. <laughs> Plus, uh, you know, I was average. These guys were great. I had great seasons, maybe two. These guys were great. 